réagir Il nous faut réagir Oh, agissons, agissons En donnant la vitamine A Du fer, du zinc, de l'ia ah, Agissons, agissons Favorisons la disponibilité Et l'accès aux aliments Car la nutrition la clé du développement durable Lutter contre la malnutrition C'est lutter contre la pauvreté yeah. La nutrition Clé du développement durable Lutter contre la malnutrition C'est lutter contre la pauvreté La nutrition Clé du développement durable I'd like to start shortly, please. La nutrition, c'est l'affaire de tous. De tous. De tous. <laughs> Ma nutrition va gagner mani problème oui kursa na Zambia. Hey lele ngava na vale kulava to sa. Due to this, their brains will not grow properly. They are not enjoying good health. In school they will not perform well and in future they are likely to earn less money simply because they lack good nutrition. Emuke makitu. Daliso, mwana wa mukomboni ndiye chifukwa chake ini. Bali my election amena lubwera posa chedwa ba 2015. Ine nika voti yanga bali msogolero amena akonda nutrition. This is Tishan. People with good nutrition are key to Zambia's development. I'm looking for a presidential candidate who has the best plan for nutrition improvement. My name is Slab D. I'm voting for a presidential candidate who will put more money on nutrition and ensure that existing programs include nutrition. You should do the same. Yes, sir. This is Francia. What commitment is your party making towards nutrition? Because I'm voting for nutrition in the 2015 elections for a Zambia where every mother and child is assured of sufficient nutrition. This message has been brought to you by the Civil Society Scaling Up Nutrition, CSO Sun Zambia. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen outside in the marketplace, we will start in two minutes. Um, the final sessions of the Global Gathering will commence in two minutes, so please enter the main plenary hall. Thank you. gentlemen I'd like you to take your seats as we will start the final session
Okay, this final session will have three parts. Uh, the first is a reporting back of from from the uh, working groups that have met uh, this afternoon. Uh, the second will be presentation, short presentations by a small number of people about particular aspects, of particular events, or that are, are coming up in the in in in. Uh, in the in the in in the future, uh, we're also delighted to be joined by Arthur and Cousin, executive ex executive director of the World Food Program, and then uh, we get to to the end, and the end will involve a few words of thanks to a few people, which I uh, will be very happy happy to do. Okay, so could we have on stage the people who are presenting from the working groups from this afternoon. We have five. Okay. Could we have the remaining three presenters, please? Okay, William is one. We're only missing two at this stage. We're only now missing one. This is progress. Okay, very good. <laughs> okay, thank you very much all. So we'll start, uh, will we start from, from this side maybe? Fike? No, we, are, we have a bit of a different order. We are a bit, we're not oh, yeah. listening to the leadership here. This is a movement, Tom. All right, okay, okay. Well, wh what order, why don't you choose the order you want to go in, in that case? No, because I think uh, we would start with uh, group number one. And okay. group number one, we're, we're discussing actually what ambitions should we collectively have with respect to the four strategic objectives of the Sun movement. And I, I must say we had a very lively discussion. It was really interesting. Uh, many different points of view. Uh, it, was, it was clear that we had many different networks uh, available uh, in, our, in our session. What we felt was very important that we need to dream. We still need to dream. That's extremely important. We need to be very ambitious. And if we're not ambitious, we will never reach our goal. But of course, we also need realistic targets, priorities, and incremental steps to be effective with mutual accountability to maintain our drive, our passion, our ambition, to challenge us and support each other. So that was actually one of the main issues which came up that everyone was re realizing that we need to be practical but if we only practical and we don't have a big vision then we will never reach our goal so that was actually one of the major drivers uh, uh, for us in the future if we discuss the roadmap the other aspect was also really discussed for many different angles and it was leadership so many countries also felt we need leadership, but we need different type of leadership. We don't only need leadership at the global level, but we also need leaders at the national level. But that's not enough. We need them at the sub-national level and even at the community level. And we need to involve all those different leaders also at the global level, because otherwise it becomes only a top-down approach and we can never reach the goal of zero stunting if we don't include everyone in the whole movement. And I think, uh, so that was very interesting. But again, it also, was also clear that the countries were at different stages of development. So we need, as, as the whole movement, we need to embrace the diversity of the different countries. And by diversity, we can also say, okay, we can learn from each other, but we can also learn from each other, not only between countries, but also within the different sub-national levels. 
and, and many other actually fields already have tried to do that. The, um, the other, well, yeah, one of the last points that was brought up was innovation. We, we, we need to look in a different way at the strategy, because if we do only business as usual, we can never reach the goal. And the fact that all the SDGs are accepted now, so we have 16 plus, of course, communication and partnership, that means, in fact, if we embrace all the, all the SDGs, automatically a lot of the actions which are needed for reducing stunting and reducing malnutrition in all its forms, we can reach. So if we don't partner, and if you're not in, different in our thinking and being innovative, we also can't reach the goal. So those were, in principle, the main issues which came out of our session. Okay, thank you very much. Who's going next? William. Thank you so much, Tom. Um, our group, we looked at um, uh, how are we going to measure um, their objectives and um, we went through each objective and one of the things that we noticed was that um, in order for us to see progress we need to like on objective number one we identified the issue of um, nutrition commitment uh, by seeing to it that in all campaign manifestos for political parties or the party in power there are very clear nutrition objectives then we also looked at the issue of budgets, and we say this is clearly linked uh, to a political commitment that there should be sufficient budget for nutrition. And uh, we also looked at the role of parliament that has highly come out of this uh, uh, meeting, uh, and that at least we should have uh, a standalone caucus on nutrition with members spread across uh, sectors of um, different committees to ensure that nutrition is mainstreamed. Then on objective number two, how we're going to uh, measure, we looked at uh, the issue of sufficient budget allocations at national and sub-national levels. And then uh, we also looked at the issue of uh, nutrition, uh, which should be a priority in the national development um, a plan and also a priority across uh, each sector. Then we looked at the presence of nutrition interventions across sectors with an emphasis on um, stunting. We also, uh, the issue of uh, multi-sectoral actions taking place at grassroots level came out as one way in which we shall be able to measure. And then uh, the other issue that came out was the presence of a research agenda that supports uh, nutrition. For example, uh, the issue of fortification uh, came up. Uh, then on objective number three, how we're going to measure, uh, we, the issue of uh, mapping of stakeholders' action for alignment and accountability came out. Then the issue of having uh, common or homogeneous messages from stakeholders, from the multi-stakeholder platforms came out as well, so that we should all be speaking with one language. Then last but not the least, the fourth uh, objective, in terms of what, how we're going to see, um, is that the first thing that we said was, we asked ourselves, how do we avoid duplicate, duplication of uh, efforts? So we suggested that um, we come up with a pool fund system to maximize potential and avoid duplication of efforts. And secondly, uh, we looked at the issue of linking nutrition budget allocation to displacement. Um, we, the group discussed that usually allocations are very different from what is displaced for uh, nutrition. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. So who's going next? It's, uh, it's Uba, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we had a very vibrant and dynamic group, group three, and we dealt with uh, what do we need f uh, from others to make our contribution more effective. Lot of, lot of suggestions and um, roadmap 
uh, where it came. Uh, I'm going to just for it. First one, government and other partners should be accountable and efficient. It is a loud voice from our group. Uh, secondly, information sharing is very, very important, so uh, we should be very prominent and active on that issue, and for uh, especially uh, what are the programs and what are going on, these should be communicated more frequently and efficiently. So uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, has come uh, on the top. Third one, joint planning, uh, uh, spatially aligned with the national nutrition plan uh, of the country context and, and also with the national strategy is very, very important so that we can work locally, uh, uh, even we are thinking globally, but uh, it is very important to go on a local. So we need to be aligned with those plans, uh, with national plan. Uh, another is engagement of academia is really, really important, and they uh, because they can uh, generate evidence and they can share evidence and data uh, as well. And another business sector uh, definitely it comes in a very um, important way, and especially for communication and for behavior change and for information sharing, we can and align with those business sector also. And another important point is roadmap, and our roadmap need to be very clear on the community of practices, those who are doing practices in our community, uh, those roadmaps should align with our roadmap. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Daisy, please. Bien, el grupo nuestro trató de qué pueden hacer los para ayudar a alcanzar los objetivos. Our group uh, tackled the following topic: what other others can do to support our movement. So, what individuals and countries can do to provide their contribution. That was a very fruitful, very uh, constructive discussion. We have analyzed a number of objectives. As to the first objective, as to the first goal, we realized that, that uh, countries can make uh, nutrition a real and true priority. A priority they can strengthen the nutritional policies so that uh, the countries and stakeholders can speak the same language and understand each other. And then a lot was said about uh, increasing awareness uh, among politicians uh, and at government level, and then the importance uh, to have access uh, to information in order to foster favorable political conditions. Uh, and then uh, the nutritional priorities have to be linked uh, to the various uh, national plans. As to goal number two, we discussed about the importance of correlating interventions, in other words, selecting interventions in an effective way. And the UN have confirmed that countries have to select the most effective interventions that have the highest impact on nutrition. And then agriculture can no longer be considered the only source of food. And to do so, tools have to be made available to countries, like uh, the shopping basket, the basic shopping basket, which include not only staple food like uh, grains, or, but also other foods uh, that have to be included in this bas food basket. As to goal number three, we have talked about advocacy once again and that uh, nutrition must become a priority as already pointed out but we also said that uh, intersectorial plans are paramount the fact that uh, in various countries there are coordinating bodies uh, is absolutely essential we have also referred to the fact that it is absolutely essential to 
localize uh, the various uh, interventions uh, according to the specific requirement of each and every country, and that it is also important to learn from those countries uh, that are at uh, uh, an advanced stage of development. Uh, so the less developed can learn from the most developed countries. Uh, and then, again, information, access to information is key. As to resources, we highlighted the need to increase investments by governments and earmark resources to effective and efficient interventions, then monitor costs, monitor expenditure, and um, monitor the implementation of uh, the various investment policies. We have also referred uh, to cross-sectional topics, uh, for instance, exchange of experience between countries. Uh, and again, we referred uh, to advocacy and exchange of information about uh, the way the tools are used uh, and uh, the use uh, of uh, other mechanisms. We have also discussed the strengthening of the communication systems because we believe that nutrition needs a shared view. And then countries and national plans have to lay the accent on the rights that uh, the various strategies have to safeguard. So that was the debate we had within our group. So in other words, what we can do to achieve our future goals. Thank you very much. Uh, the final speaker. Um. <laughs> Self-arranged but didn't really work out because we were focused on number three and as you see there were four questions. So. Um, but also here you see we are a movement. Um, so what the question that the group focused on is what do you need from others to make your contribution more effective? Well, that of course is the greedy group because that allows you to say what you want from somebody else. It is also a bit of the group which reminds me of if you have to establish a national team when you're playing soccer, we don't want to be reminded of that as Dutch, but think of another sport. Um, <laughs> if you pull together a national team, you bring together complementary competencies. You bring together superstars, and all of you here in the room are superstars, with your, all, your, own, bene your own contributions, specific contributions to the game. And now we have to make that work better, because that's why we are all here. And that's what we focused on, to find out what these complementary competencies are. And we actually broke it up in three components, three parts, in how do we combine these complementary competencies to get further than what we would get individually. One is building the agenda. It's very clear that on a national level, we have to build that agenda as much as possible together. We saw in some of these countries that the business network is not yet there, and academia is sometimes missing from the discussion. That's not always represented. But also the civil society network is ranging in sort of the involvement in the planning phase. So what we say, the planning, do that together. Because if you plan well, you facilitate tremendously the implementation. So establish nutrition-friendly policies, but do it together. It might take longer, but it saves you in the implementation time because then everybody also understands what we're going to do, what we want to achieve, and it makes it much easier. On the implementation, we agreed that the government really needs to be central, needs to be core. I don't want to say be in control because that maybe be too much, but at least needs to be core. I think that's the best. It's a movement also in countries, so the energy and the direction needs to come from the government. And there we saw that that engagement is extremely important and have also there all the networks represented. As I mentioned, the Sun Business Network, we are working hard. I'm a business representative. We're working hard to get the business represented in all the Sun countries. And that was also really asked by the different countries that were in the room. But also there, academia. So that was another important missing component on that implementation level 
because they need to provide for the figures, they need to provide part of keeping ourselves all honest. And that brings me to the third part of the agenda, which is review. That's keeping each other honest, that's keeping each other accountable. And there it was very much said, I think there's two interesting comments that came from there. One is academia again, please academia, make sure that you get better connected to help find the evidence, but also provide the reliable numbers. And the second was a very interesting comment that was made, please global CSOs help in establishing the local CSOs, because we need to get to that local ecosystem and there we need to have CSOs that are empowered and are capable to, to, to live up to the tasks that they have to do there. They are part of the implementation, which is important, but they're also part of the review to keep uh, the checks and balances and the CSO is part of the balances. And that should not be on a country level, the international CSOs, but it should be predominantly the local CSOs. And in that way, we create a much more sustainable local ecosystem where all the players are represented and all players are capable. There was one comment made about these capabilities. I think that's an interesting one. I'll also take that into the Sun Business Network. For instance, business doesn't always realize that there's more than products and there's more than solutions. For instance, if you look at project management skills, if you look at management skills, that might be also a, comp an, a contribution that the business sector could bring into the system and help there improve on the delivery capabilities of the total ecosystem that we need to establish on a country basis. Um, one comment there, but I forgot about that, but that's about implementation, was the donor, the role of the donor there. Again, it was stressed, uh, which was also agreed on an international level, that 80% should be on budget support and 20% should be bilateral or technical assistance. That is very key. The governments, to empower the governments to implement, it is key that the governments also get there the support of the donors and not get the very specific demands from donors to make sure that governments can make the, the traction that they need to get. Thank you. Thank you very much, Volker, and, th and thank you to all of the presenters. And just... <laughs> Good. Just to remind you again that uh, all of the people who've just presented are members of the executive committee. Uh, they were... There were two members of each... There were two members of the executive committee attended each uh, session this afternoon and one of them uh, reported back. The ex so the executive committee, is, as, as I mentioned before, is chaired by Sean Baker with, with Vice Chair Abdoulaye Kaya and has begun to get into action during this global gathering. Uh, we met, it met this morning at 7 o'clock when hopefully some of the rest of you were just about getting up and having breakfast, but the executive committee was already hard at work, so it's, it's earning, it's going to earn its, its crust. And, and I think it is going to be a really important element in the good governance of the Sun movement going forward. So again, my thanks to you all and we let you take your leave. Thank you. We have one further group of people, set of people. We've we've six people now who are who are going to uh, join me on stage, and um, if I could ask Milo, Axton, Th Philo, Sean, the Honourable Nahas Ngula, and Arthur and Cousin to 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 join me, please. Okay, um, we're going to go, uh, I'll introduce everybody now in a little bit more detail and I might even get the names right this time. Uh, <laughs> we'll start with Milo, Milo, uh, st uh, at least I'll get your first name right, whether I'll get the second one or not, I don't know, Stanojevic, 
<laughs> who is who is with Care Peru, but for our purposes, more importantly here today, he's he's also chair of the Sun Civil Society Network, and Milo is going to give uh, some sense of some commentary of about the Civil Society Network. Thank you. Um, I represent the uh, Sun Civil Society Network that uh, includes almost 2,500 CSOs that are involved in, um, in civil society alliances in across 34 countries. That kind of gives you the scope of our, of our movement here. And I would like to comment on four things that I, that I reflected on and that struck me over the past three days. The first is that I think we need to build broad constituencies for nutrition. I think uh, both in countries and globally, I think we need to get citizens involved and I think, like somebody said over the last three days, we need to make noise and we need to be visible. I think that's really important. I think we need to build alliances with other groups. And I, one that came up that I think is really important is climate change. We know that's going to be a lot of money there. And um, one of the key elements there is really, you know, building resilience of poor farmers as they have to deal and adapt to, uh, to the climate conditions. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. Family farming is really a key element that is one of the um, nutrition sensitive uh, interventions. Um, so I, uh, the second one I think is uh, what, I, what I heard is information for empowerment. And we, we've been doing that well with communities as good practitioners, uh, but I think we need to also do that more systematically with women. And we need to also, um, as I heard, you know, for example, par parliamentarians saying, you know, we, we need to be, we need information to be able to be effective champions. Um, we, sh we, sh we should be doing that with government uh, officials. We need to do that with civil society leaders in the countries where we work. So I'd say let's ensure that we have effective uh, champions for nutrition. The, the other area that struck me is, and I've been talking about this the last couple of days, is the issue of nutrition data. And I really think it's time that we fix the problem of nutrition data. From a country perspective, um, we need independent, regular, reliable, and comprehensive data at national and subnational levels. Governments need it to be able to target their interventions effectively and also to assess performance. Civil society needs it to hold governments accountable. With all the money that we're investing in nutrition, why can't we invest in getting nutrition data right? Otherwise, like um, Lawrence Haddad said this morning, we're flying blind. We're flying blind globally. We're flying blind in the countries. And lastly, lastly, um, I think we need to educate girls to make a lasting change. I think that's critical. Um, I'm, not just, I'm not just talking about primary school. I think a lot, in a lot of countries, in middle-income countries, we're past that. I'm talking about secondary school and the significant impact that we can have if girls complete secondary school. One of the, for example, young women without education are four times more likely to be adolescent mothers. They're also four times more likely to get married at an early age. Children of mothers who have completed secondary school have a 40% greater chance of living past five years of age. And for every year of secondary school, girls will earn 20% more when they're adults. And children of educated mothers have twice the opportunity of going to school themselves. So I say, let's educate girls and break the cycle of poverty. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, um, Milo. Now, we'd like, I'd now like to move to Axton, Axton Salim of Indo Foods and of the, uh, the Sun Business Network. Thank you, Tom. First of all, I cannot help but feel re-energized in this room. We're all here for one common goal, for every child to reach his or her full potential. Nutrition justice for all within our lifetime. So the global gathering itself 
is actually a testament that we understand that we will not succeed without multi-stakeholder approach. There is a role for everyone. Comparing Sun Global Gathering 2015 to that of last year, I'm actually very excited to see that there is a higher interest in public-private partnership. But we are still very underrepresented. We hope to see more businesses invited next year because we actually need new faces for this movement. So reflecting the last two days, we have discussed how businesses can offer innovations, skills, resources required, uh, resources required to collectively scale up nutrition, but there are different roles that regional companies and local companies can play. Local companies understand consumers, distribution, access to make things cheaper and better, consumers' affordability, and most importantly, local taste and habits. After all, from farm to plate, 90% of food passes through the private sector. We are recognized to play a significant role in nutrition. How can we use our abilities to help with the Sun Movement? The Sun Business Network has ex examples of scalable initiatives on offer from businesses within a multi-stakeholder uh, approach. Mass fortification of staple foods, market-based approaches to improve nutrition, tools for behavior changes campaigns around nutrition and hygiene, and also workforce nutrition policies to support breastfeeding methods. These are just some examples. It's not that difficult to figure out how to work with us. There is definitely a movement going on within the Sun Business Network itself. When we first started out, we had a goal of trying to get 99 companies to join the network. But within a year, we had managed to sign 164, 44 global companies and 120 local companies at country level. All the companies come from trackable commitments. We are ready to be part of the conversation. Some Sun countries can start by engaging champions across sectors who have the same goals and vision as the Sun movement. Of course, we have to put checks and balances in place to prevent conflict of interest. To end, I would like to quote what Etherin said in our last Sun Business Network meeting in New York. We need to look forward, not backwards. We cannot demonize businesses for the practices for the past. Let us work together in a transparent, respectful, and accountable manner, moving forward so that we can realize the objective we all share, ending hunger in our lifetime. Thank you. Thank you very much, Axton. <laughs> We're now going to hear from Thilo Panzerbitter of the German Toilet Organ Organization about a forthcoming meeting and about a possible connection with Sun. Thank you very much, Tom. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and um, I'm very honored to, to be here and to be able to speak. Um, I'm a steering committee member of um, another global partnership called Sanitation and Water for All. Um, and this is also a international multi-stakeholder platform. Um, we also have global gatherings. We call them uh, partnership meetings, and every two years, um, we carry out ministerial meetings where sector ministers come together, exchange experiences, and we also have high-level meeting where we have finance ministers um, come to talk to their sector ministers um, to secure financing for WASH. At the last meeting, I think we had 54 countries represented. In between, we have a continuous dialogue on these commitments. We strengthen political prioritization, the national um, process, planning processes that are going on. We look at developing a strong evidence base, harmonize monitoring, and strengthen capacity at all levels. And at our meetings, we always say we should link to other sectors. And at this meeting, I've heard it many times, said we should link to other sectors. So I'm here to sort of come outside of my comfort zone and to come to such a meeting of another sector. 
And I'm happy that the Sun Network also invited our executive chair, Katharina de Albuquerque, who unfortunately couldn't come because she's just planning and preparing our partnership meeting in a few weeks. But she sends her regards and she sees particular importance in working together, particularly in light of the SDGs. Because there's supposed to be more focus on cross thematic links. And she stated that she was particularly interested in learning about your models for ensuring accountability, because we want to do the same. So please view my presence here as a starting point of a collaboration between Sun and SWA. And I want to give you two specific opportunities to now link with the WASH sector. The first one being that um, the 19th of November, many may not know, is the UN Day called World Toilet Day. And this year it has the motto, better sanitation for better nutrition. I think all of you, particularly the... So I think this is something that in your countries, anyone doing advocacy for this issue, you can use, and it's one contribution to linking these two issues. Um, the second one is that on occasion of World Toilet Day, or just to add, you can, um, you can find it on the UN Water website, details to that day. There are resources. You can add things you're doing, so please do that. Um, on, and on the occasion of World Toilet Day, the German Civil Society Network, of which I'm also the chair, um, is organizing an international conference on wash and nutrition in Bonn, Germany. Um, and I know this comes late. Registration basically ends next Monday morning. Um, or pre-registration, but um, my goal in organizing it is basically that anyone who comes doesn't know 50% of the people there because they're from the other sector and normally they don't talk to each other. So what began as a small event we were trying to organize has been sort of like stinging into a bee's nest. There's been a huge buzz and um, now many think this is important, so we're very honored that also Sun and SWA are carrying this out with us in cooperation as well as the German government. And at this event, we wish to discuss with you um, common indicators that our sectors could use, ways of better targeting our work, um, but also learning from the global partnerships. I've learned a lot in these days. So we'll do mirror sessions, always having one individual from each sector on stage. So Lawrence Haddad will be here um, be there introducing the Global Nutrition Report, for example, and Bruce Gordon from WHO, the Glass Report for WASH. And we'll also be talking about Sun and SWA. Um, and also other constituencies, donors, civil society can discuss about um, how to truly link the policy of their work. So if you're interested in this, please do approach me. Um, I do have some flyers available, which I'll put on the stage up here. And um, the Sun Secretariat is putting it up on the web page or has done so already, so you can find the links to the event there. Thank you very much. You know, thank you very much. I think this is a potentially powerful connection and a, a, a synergy between uh, both, uh, both movements uh, with, the, with, your, the, with the ultimate aim of improving nutrition. We're now going to hear from Sean Baker. Sean, as you all know, I think, at this stage, is he's Director of Nutrition at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and he's Chair of the Sun Movement Executive Committee. But Sean is going to speak to us about the run-up to another important event uh, within the next year. It's the Rio, Rio event at, 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 associated with the Olympics. And Sean, you're going to talk to us about it. Uh, thank you, Tom. Um, so as Tom said, I want to speak to you about the upcoming Nutrition for Growth Summit, the second Nutrition for Growth Summit, which the Brazilian government has committed to organize in 2016. Uh, the target date is August 4th as part of the opening of the Rio de Janeiro Olympics. Um, to put it a bit in the context, I think all of you who've seen the independent comprehensive evaluation of the Scaling Up Nutrition movement, one of the clear messages is that a real sweet spot and added value of the Sun Movement has been advocacy. So that's something I think advocacy is forever. We never can let up the pedal on that. 
And then a clear thing coming through this discussion, a lot of the other discussions we've been having uh, uh, is we need to increase commitment. We need to increase financial commitment. And the Nutrition for Growth Summit in London in, on June uh, in June of 2013 was really the first big global pledging moment for nutrition that we've seen as a community. Uh, and so it was really quite, quite a milestone for, for us. Uh, and the Global Nutrition Report, as we saw earlier this morning, has indicated that there has been quite a considerable uptick in resources uh, from 2013, if you use 2013 as the baseline, almost, almost doubling of donor resources. And the Nutrition for Growth also had some very strong commitments from a number of high burden countries. Uh, perhaps not as many as we would like, but that's where we're going to get to. Uh, this first Nutrition for Growth Summit uh, was jointly organized by the governments of the United Kingdom, Brazil, and the Children's Investment Fund Foundation. And part of Brazil's commitment was to follow on to the second Nutrition for Growth Summit uh, as part of the Olympic celebrations, both to keep everybody's feet to the fire for those commitments they made back in London in 2013, but also very importantly, to do even more because while there's been an uptick, as we know, we need to do more. Uh, and I would posit that this is probably the single most important global moment for nutrition in 2016, and actually probably out even further. And as you know, Milo said, we need to what, make noise and be visible. This is a time for all of us to make noise and be visible, but not actually us so much, but our leaders. Um, so, and I think Brazil offers an incredibly special opportunity. As everybody in this room probably knows, it's really a poster child of saying, you know, stunting can be done with. 80% uh, reduction of stunting in less than a generation, extraordinary achievements. And it's really then, I think, a, a huge opportunity to showcase the progress and new commitments from high burden countries. Um, and as Lawrence Haddad also said this morning that, you know, commitments are not just dollars, dollars are important, or whatever currency, but also it could be commitments and targets, commitments and policy changes. Uh, and I think we really need to underscore as we move to Rio, the need for new commitments from high burden countries, from donors, and from every other stakeholder that's making this happen. Uh, personally, and this is I think why I got tasked with making this, I had the, uh, privilege of visiting Brasilia in uh, uh, early August and had meetings with senior leadership of the ministry, Federal Ministry of Health, the Federal Ministry uh, of Foreign Affairs, and also the Federal Ministry of Social Welfare and the Fight Against Hunger. Uh, really, you could sense their excitement and commitment to organizing this event. Uh, a little anecdote, uh, the meeting with the Minister of Social Welfare and the Fight Against Hunger, which is the ministry that runs the incredible uh, Bosa Familia conditional cash transfer program. It went so well halfway through, she says, okay, I'm going to show you a PowerPoint presentation. She personally walked me through the whole Bosa Familia program. It was just so inspiring to have that level of leadership and deep, deep knowledge. And it also, we were able to leverage that in uh, the, around the UN General Assembly a, bit, a li little over three weeks ago that our co-chairs, Bill and Melinda, met with uh, President Rousseff and some of her senior leadership. And the discussion was all about nutrition for growth. And really, it was really inspiring to see her level of commitment. And then her office issued a press release right after that, committing to uh, the organization of nutrition for growth. So my message to you is that, you know, as we walk out of this room, we've got a lot of stuff to do, but one thing all of us need to do with this movement is to mobilize, mobilize for new commitments and no mobilize for political leadership because one of the secrets of success of the Brazil experience is that it had the highest level political leadership continued through administration to administration. And so for nutrition, to, that, that means we also are shooting to have head of state level delegations or head of government level de delegations for uh, Rio 2016. So go forth, mobilize, make noise, and be visible. John, thank you very much indeed. It's a real pleasure, uh, indeed an honor, to introduce uh, the honorable, I think the right honorable, as far as I recall, Nahas Angula. Uh, 
who has been a member and a very active member of the Sun Lead Group since its establishment in April of 2012, former Prime Minister of Namibia, uh, and, I w and currently the chairperson of the Namibia Alliance for Improved Nutrition. I had the great pleasure of being in Namibia a few weeks ago, uh, participating in a, in, in a meeting uh, at which the Right, right Honourable Naha Sangula was present, and I got a real sense of his personal and long-standing commitment to this issue. So we're very pleased that as a, a current lead member group, um, he's going to share with us his reflections on this global gathering, on three days of conversation, and where we might go from here. Thank you, Tom. It's on. Good afternoon, everybody. Let me start by appreciating the fact that uh, the scaling up nutrition movement has been able to organize this very important gathering, which brought us all together here in this beautiful city of Milano. I appreciate the efforts made by Tom and his team to make this gathering a success. Let me tell you a small story. When I came here on Monday afternoon for registration, I was not quite sure which gate to use. So I went to, to a gate opposite this one. I found secret people there, I asked them, where can I register? Oh, they said, I ah, just go to the second floor. So I came to the second floor. One of your staff found me wandering around. And she said, what are you doing here? And I said, no, I was told, told to come to the second floor. She said, do you know that you're in the security area? And I said, well, it helps to be a senior citizen because nobody can suspect you of being a terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for you for the dedication of your, of your staff. I was able to register. I must say that uh, <clears throat> I enjoyed all the, uh, all, all the re refreshing contributions which you have made here which covered a lot of broad areas regarding this important subject of, of nutrition. It is important, however, to remind all of us that the subject we have been discussing is not nutrition. Our concerns are about child survival. Our concerns are about child welfare. And our concerns have been about child well-being through nutrition we must put a face of a person in front of this word, nutrition. I regard ourselves to be champions for those who cannot shout and send you are supposed to be shouting. For those who cannot form pressure groups for those who cannot vote, for those who cannot conduct demonstrations, public demonstrations, to pressure the politicians. Yet, they are the future. They are the future. Our efforts in the Sun Movement is to define that future. 
as we look ahead, we want the future to be the future of productive citizens, the future of happy, happy citizens, the future of healthy citizens, and the future of peaceful citizens. That is the future we want to build. That future starts with the infants of today. And we want them, therefore, to grow up optimally, healthy, happy, and well-fed. That future starts with you and with me. As we close our gathering here, I urge you all to keep engaged, to keep inspired, and indeed to invest your efforts and, on, and your energy in the welfare of our children. I thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we've arrived at the final speaker of the panel, and uh, it's a huge pleasure to introduce Erthrun Cousin, who came in from a flight this morning from Mauritania. So she had every excuse if not to be here, but she very definitely chose to be here. And that's an indication of her commitment and her support uh, over the longest period of time. Last year, November, the WFP hosted uh, the, the Global Gathering. It was a great, great success. And we had an opening session on the Sunday evening at which Earthrun fired us all up for the next two days after that. I'm sure she's going to do the same again. On that occasion, I said that if I wasn't on a panel with Ertrin at least once every quarter, <laughs> I felt that my life was somehow incomplete. And uh, that's absolutely true. <laughs> so uh, this is the first occasion, this quarter anyway, and I'm greatly looking forward to what you're going to talk to us. And you're going to speak from the podium, are you? Can do that first. Okay, all right. I, I'm... I'm appreciating, first of all, Tom for letting me speak from the podium because having just gotten off this flight from Mauritania, um, if I don't stand, I don't know if I can get through the whole thing. Um, it was, but there was no way I was going to miss the global gathering. That's how important I believe that <clears throat> this community of interest coming together is to the future of our planet, not just to our sector. So let me thank Tom and of course his son Secretariat and in his absence my friend David Nabarro for keeping, helping us keep this movement alive, for ensuring that we have a center of gravity for our movement and for giving us a much better stage than the one we had last year. Don't you guys think they've done a great job here? <laughs> you, can, you can tell when a movement is growing up because it starts to look more professional at every meeting. And this is, says that the, our movement, the Sun Movement, is growing up. So what Thomas and the team have asked me to talk about is how do we go forward. But having listened to the speakers before me on this panel and those who spoke about your sessions that you held this afternoon, there's very little else to say uh, that hasn't already been said. So what I'd like to do is just wrap up around a couple of key topics, three or four key topics. The first of which is ensuring if we are going to go forward with this movement and we are going to continue to grow this movement, that we, of course, embrace the progress that we've made. 
we acknowledge the success that we have had as a group, as, a group as, as networks coming together at the country level, at the regional level, and of course at global level to move nutrition forward. But we know that it's not enough. And we've heard the word vision and dreaming about the possibilities of how we go forward. And recognizing that it's more than just nutrition, it is about her future. And recognizing that her future starts with being fully nourished. And that her future is in all of our hands. And that her future is not in least developed countries. That her future is a global future. Geography does not define where our work must be performed. And so this movement, yes, we have sun countries, we have reach countries, but our movement at this level, at global level, must speak for all of those who are furthest behind. As the Secretary General said, and we, agree, we the entire global community embraced in uh, the acceptance of Agenda 2030, that we must prioritize moving the furthest behind first. And that furthest behind individual, that family, that woman, that child, does not have a geography. We know that when we talk about the furthest behind first, too often we're talking about women. We're talking about indigenous people. We're talking about marginalized people, about minorities, about that bottom quintile that as countries enter middle income status, are being left further and further behind every year. So we know that this movement must have voice, give voice to the furthest behind as we move forward. We know that we must prioritize a thousand days. And we can't lose sight of a thousand days being at the basis of that opportunity for breaking the intergenerational cycle of malnutrition. That if we can ensure that a mother is fully nourished, that her child will then be, have a better chance of being born fully nourished. That if we can ensure that that mother who is breastfeeding is fully nourished, that her child has a better chance of being fully nourished. And when she no longer breastfeeds, that we are providing the right support and interventions to that child through that first thousand days. We recognize, we must also recognize, that when we talk about malnutrition, that we're talking about malnutrition in all its facets including undernourishment, micronutrient deficiencies, as well as the subject that we in our community don't talk about enough yet, and that is obesity. And the challenges that that is creating for chronic disabilities. And the cost that that is having on economies. And that over half the countries on our planet now are addressing both undernutrition and obesity simultaneously. So putting the first, putting the furthest behind first will help us move forward with this movement. Embracing multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholder opportunities. I've heard every single speaker talk about it now. So it sounds like if you all haven't done anything else over the last three days, you've recognized we are not in this alone. That we must embrace multi-sectoral multi -sectoral actors. And that includes recognizing that nutrition is not just a health issue. 
that it's also an agricultural issue. It's a social welfare issue. It's an education issue. It's an academia and science challenge. It's a communications issue. It's a sanitation issue. Because if we do not have access to clean water and sanitation, what goes in comes right back out. <laughs> You'll get that later, don't worry. <laughs> and we will not accomplish the goals that we set, that we set out to achieve. But it's also a multi-stakeholder challenge, which I've heard the, the, each speaker talk about the role of government, the role of local community organizations, recognizing the role of business. And I thank you, my friend, for quoting my comment from, um, from the Business Network meeting. But I will tell you that as a result of that comment, I've read blogs that said that the business community has now overtaken the Sun Movement. And we can't afford to see anybody as the enemy. We need everybody to move forward. We need to also ensure that consumers are a part of this movement. And we need to ensure that we have the policy frameworks that will support the participation of all the stakeholders in this movement at every level. We need to provide the space and the opportunity to work outside our silos if we are going to achieve the objectives that give us the ability to create real efficient social protection and social safety net programs that make a difference to the furthest behind. We need to embrace data. And we've talked about embracing nutrition data, but it doesn't stop at nutrition data. If we think about the 17 goals of the Agenda 2030 and the opportunity that data has to drive the connectivity between the multi-sectors and multi-stakeholders on inputs and analysis of those inputs to determine whether we are actually providing the right support that is necessary across the multiple issues that are involved in moving lives forward, then that means that we need to have more access to a broader base of data which requires interoperability of data, which requires access to data across stakeholders that doesn't exist today, that requires information as a public good, that is accessible at the various different levels in which we work to ensure that we can analyze that data for the benefit of those we are serving. It is 2015, there is more data available than ever before. Think outside our box to ensure that we are capturing the benefit of that data to deliver results. And finally, if we are to move forward, of course, we must have the resourcing. We must have resourcing that goes beyond the conversations about donor contributions. We know that scaling up programs will require investments from governments. So we must work with governments to prioritize nutrition and the activities that are necessary to move this agenda forward that will get real budget dollars over long periods of time. But I am not suggesting that we don't need global donors. Don't get me wrong. But that's only a part of the financial resource picture, that we don't need institutional donors. Thank you very much, Gates Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation, 
and all the others who have been partners with so many of us around all of these issues and helped us move forward. But it requires from all of us who are working in these areas more accountability from every single one of us, more transparency. When we say multi-sectoral, multi-stakeholder partnerships, that should not come at a premium for the funding, for our funders. We need to work together to streamline our activities to ensure that we are efficient as, as efficient as possible. It also means that we may need to give up some of our autonomy across the different sectors. In other words, having joint monitoring and evaluation activities that ensure that we are capturing the full breadth of what we are doing and how we are making a difference in how we achieve outcomes. Which means that we must accept the reality of scorecards at every level. And we must accept the, the validity and responsibility for measuring the work that we perform. But it also finally must mean that there is more power in the hands of community leaders. I was talking earlier to, to Martin about a woman who is here, and you know who I'm talking about because she started off as a community nutritionist and is now a parliamentarian. And we know that the power comes from those at the community who can carry forward the information that is necessary and help us shape the programs that are required. But that brings me right to my conclusion. Because what we must also have, in addition to advocacy, because we must give voice at every level to the work that is required, to the successes that we achieve, the hurdles we must overcome, and the opportunities for those we serve that we then develop. But we must also have patience. We must recognize that We've come a long way, but we have a very, very long way to go. We set a date of 2030 with Agenda 2030 to achieve the nutrition outcome, the nutrition outcomes that we've been discussing over the last three days. But that means that we need to recognize that we will require multi-year programming, multi-year support. We cannot take our foot off the gas and we can't allow the world to take its foot off the gas of, of providing support for nutrition across the global community, particularly at country level. We cannot and must not allow the next interesting shiny ball to take our attention as organizations, as institutions, away from this issue. Agenda 2030 embraces the possibility of peace and prosperity for all. We, as a global community, must continue to give voice to the reality that there can be no peace and prosperity without food security and nutrition. That until every child has the ability and the opportunity to live life to her fullest mental and physical potential, there can be no peace and prosperity for all. 
We must continue to grow these gatherings at the global level, but remember that we also need these gatherings at the regional and country level, and even at the community level, to ensure that there's a recognition of overcoming the burdens of chronic malnutrition, stunting, wasting, and food insecurity as the basis of peace and prosperity for all at every level. And by giving voice, by ensuring that we demand the patience that this issue requires, we will achieve the goals of no child malnourished, every child having the opportunity. And we can then turn what is an interesting dialogue that keeps us moving forward in 2030 into a celebration of what we achieve. And I look forward to giving the closing speech at that global gathering. Thank you all very much. Erthren, thank you so much for that inspira those inspirational words. You, you know, when the Secretary General of the UN established uh, the lead group, I think part of its, its role, or as envisaged, was that it would consist of champions, champions in the cause of nutrition. And in Erthren, we've always had a champion of champions, so thank you. We're close to, as the old song says, the, the final curtain on this great global gathering. Um, and I want to say a few words of thanks to a number of people. But before that, I, I, there are some practical matters uh, to deal with. And the first one is that a number of you are, uh, have indicated an interest in attending Expo Milan uh, tomorrow. And there are, I think there are going to be on the screen afterwards some information about that. So that's just the first practical thing. The second practical thing is um, headsets. To remind again that we would like all the headsets back. If we don't get the headsets back, we'll have to pay for them. And you wouldn't want us to have to do that. So please, everybody, ensure that they don't inadvertently, and I'm sure it would only be ever inadvertently, uh, fit into your slip into your bag. So please do that. And the third practical thing is uh, the evaluation forms. We would genuinely like you to take the time to fill in the evaluation forms, what you thought of this global gathering. We've tried every year to improve on the year before. And we can best do that if we listen to the, to the voices of yourselves and to the recommendations as to how things could be improved. So all of those things, Expo, headsets, evaluation. That's the practical agenda out of the way. Now I want to a small reflection on this, these, I think, this remarkable three days that we've spent together. And to, firstly, the first people to thank is all yourselves, everybody. <laughs> Almost 500 of you, which is remarkable, and I think the vast majority are still here. We said at the beginning, uh, at the opening se session, that this was, in a sense, almost like a family gathering. We've all had experience of large family gatherings, and they're not, there's always a grumpy and disagreeable uncle or somebody who's, the, who's likely to cause trouble. I haven't seen any evidence of that at all in the, past, in the past three days. But what I have seen instead is an atmosphere of great friendship, uh, of really active participation, as evidenced by the voices that were so, so frequent uh, from the floor at plenary and all through 
the workshop sessions and a real sense that we were here together reinforcing our commitment uh, to the Sun movement and reinforcing the learning that were that is implicit in the Sun in the Sun movement. So I think that has been hugely positive. The other thing to be said is that the the the, the agenda was structured in a very purposeful a purposeful way. It was structured based on work that's been going on in the communities of practice and it was structured in such a way that the conclusions arriving from this uh, from these three days will feed naturally into the further development of the strategy and more particularly the development of the roadmap and the roadmap is going to be the if you like the practical way forward for the sun movement drawing on what we've heard here today and, and drawing on other lessons that we we've learned we were going to have to strike a, a balance between getting this roadmap finished and the degree of detail to which we, we want to bring it and ensuring that uh, there is a proper consultation with all the networks and making sure that the, the country focal points and the countries are engaged and in, uh, involved as well. But I think the executive committee is going to have an important role in that. At other levels of thanks, I think Arthurin is quite right. One starting point of thanks is this magnificent city of Milan. I think we've been hugely well served by the, this conference center and by the general uh, facilities uh, that, that, we, that we've had here. The, um, and when I, I add to that then, a thanks, a particular thanks to the interpreters and to all the, the, the staff of, of the Convention Centre. <laughs> and I want to thank the, the donors who have enabled so many of us uh, to get here. The donors to the donors to the Secretariat, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Canada, the EU, France, Germany, Ireland, the Netherlands, and the UK, and then other donors who very generously contributed uh, to pay for tickets and, and uh, travel uh, to get here, including USAID, UNICEF, uh, and Japan. So thank you to, to those as well. But in a way. Uh, a very special thanks is due to the staff of the Secretariat who have put in an enormous effort And a particular thanks to, to Christine who's helped to pull so much of all this together and to Claire who's been the logistic ma manager. But I think on this occasion it's right that I quickly read out the names of all of, of the staff because I think all of them have made contributions. Alam, Ashley, Christine, Claire, Claudio, <laughs> you could wait till the end, Delphine, Diana, Edwin, Ferran, Elena, Fanny, Flo uh, Florence, Jean Daniel, Maria Pizzini, Mark, Marion, Matt, Mich Mich Michel, Nicole, Ufanat, Paula, Patricia, Sergio, Tahira, T T Twi, uh, Zach, and Johannan. They are the people who <laughs> enabled. It was wonderful to have had David Nabarro with us for the first day and a half, and I think we all enormously valued that. But I have to say a particular word of thanks to Florence as <laughs> as the leader and motivator of this wonderful staff and as I'm very well aware as an enormously hard worker uh, at, at all levels so particular thanks to her. So. I think that's basically all I want to say to you. Um, it's been a real pleasure 
uh, in, in being involved in this in this exercise. A real pleasure in in having the chance to meet so many of you. I'm sorry I didn't meet all of you, but I, I met as many of, of you as I could. And I really hope everybody enjoyed it and took a great benefit out of it, and that we will hope to see many of you here, not maybe here, but for the next year's Global Gathering. Thank you very much. <laughs>